Hello you pros and welcome back to my IT workshop. This is your boy Alvin Drill and in this video I'm going to show you how to how to turn your an old desktop computer to a um, gaming um, machine, okay? So for that end I'm going to use this HP ProDesk 600 U1, but this could work kind of the same for a Dell or Lenovo, as long as it's a uh, desktop computer and it has the characteristics that we need. So as you can see, this one had Windows 7 when it came out in 2014. Now I'm showing you that I'm not wearing any jewelry or watches and I'm going to discharge myself of any static electricity that I might have in my body by touching the case, okay? Because it's metallic. So now I'm going to open it. A little story about this desktop. I had it for free because in my last job, they, are, they were going to throw it away. Like I said, 2014 is the model of this device. So I, I asked if I could keep it and they say, yeah, sure, you can have it if you want it. So that's how I have it. So uh, as you can see, this is how it looks and it's very broad as you can see and the the basic characteristics of this model is that it has an intel celeron dual core 2.8 gigahertz and the ram is ddr3 so that's kind of the most important because the hard drive we can add the ram we can add as well um, so I have done two videos in the past about this specific model. One is to update the BIOS version and the other is to reset the password, the BIOS password. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you're interested. So, well, uh, let's do a pause for you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. That really helps me a lot. So thank you very much. So I'm showing you that's the, um, the heatsink for the processor. Uh, those are the RAM modules, which are empty right now. I'm going to add them. So I bought all of that. I'm going to replace the hard drive by an SSD as well. I'm going to leave the link in the description below for all those items if, if you're interested. So uh, the other thing we need is that I'm going to zoom in that your motherboard has this socket, which is the PCI Express 16, or it's also known as a video card. All right. So you need that to add a, a, well, a video card for gaming. Now, the other important thing is that you, the, the power supply that you have in this case is HP, as you can see there, uh, the wattage, the how much power it can deliver is enough. In this case, this one has a maximum of 240 watts. So the motherboard, I mean, the video card that you choose doesn't have to exceed that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I'm going to show you the one I chose for the, this device. By the way, I'm going to install Windows 10 in this one because it's capable. I also have done a video in the past. So if you want to install it, I'm going to leave the link in the description below for that as well. Now the video card, uh, like I said, we're going to replace the hard drive. We're going to add more RAM and we're going to install the video card. So the video card I chose because this is a budget gaming computer is this one, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 750Ti. Okay, the link is going to be in the video description below, as always. And this um, this video card is not new, it's uh, used. I, I bought it from eBay. You can buy it from Amazon as well, but it's too expensive because of this shortage of microprocessor. So this should cost five, uh, five, $50, but I bought it for 100 okay? So, but it should be cheaper. So this is a good one based on reviews, so that's why I chose it. So I'm showing you the connectors it has. It has uh, two HDMI and two DVI. So it supports up to four monitors, but I only need one for gaming, of course. And it also supports 4K, but we are not going to use 4K for this rig. Now, the, the socket and the connector has to match. In this case, they match. So that's important. Now, I'm going to show you a little that you can remove this kind of a slots um, <laughs> for so you can add more capabilities to your desktop computer so in this case we can remove four so we're going to do that to add the video card because it doesn't fit the way it is right now so another thing uh, about this uh, model i wanted to show you some more things but i was not able to do it when you put it like that as you can notice this is a little higher the video card is is higher than the case so it's not going to fit in other words you cannot put back the case which in my in my opinion it's not important because I'm, I'm i'm just going to use this for gaming so i don't need to close it or anything so for me that's not an issue you might have another uh, desktop computers where the case is bigger so it's going to fit with no problems but as you can see, it's not what's going to happen in here. So the other thing we have to remove from this case 
is all that metallic part that I'm showing you right here because otherwise it's not going to fit. For that, I simply use a, a plier, I cut it off, and that's pretty much it, <laughs> what I did. So that's what we need, that's what we need to do. So now I'm going to show you how it looks, everything put together, okay? So I'll see you in a few seconds. Welcome back. So this is how it looks after everything is put together. As you can see, the computer is already on. I'm going to show you around. So that's the SSD I replaced, the new hard drive. It's 250 gigabytes. That's the video card working right now. That's the processor and the RAM. We put four uh, RAM modules, each one of four gigabytes. So in total, we have 16. So allow me a few seconds to adjust my camera. So it looks like that. So this is the desktop computer, Windows 10. As well, if you want to know how to install Windows 10, you can click on the top right of this screen. So this is the hard drive. It's, like I said, it is an SSD. So again, video links in the video description below. Now I'm going to use this piece of software, which is in ZP, uh, Z, CPU-Z, which allows you to see all the equipment in your computer. Okay. So I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you need it. I have used it before in many other videos. So as you can see, uh, if I go to motherboard, well, it's telling me the processor, Intel Celeron G1840. If I go to the motherboard, Hewlett Packard, the model. If I go to memory, DDR3, 16 gigabytes. If I go to graphics, we have the model we have talked about, GTX 750Ti. We can see the power that it uses. We can see all that. We can see the model, a lot of characteristics. So the processor has two cores, two threads. You can see 2.8 gigahertz. So we have to all that information. You can we can verify that. So now I'm going to open just to more verification um, this one over here. So we go to performance and you can see the Intel Celeron is the same processor. We have two cores, two, one socket, the speed over there, and you can see how it behaves. So now I'm going to close it because we don't need it anymore. The next is, this is the website from NVIDIA for the GeForce GTX 750 Ti. I ju you just Google it on Google, <laughs> you just Google it and you're going to find the drivers over here. As you can see, the maximum resolution is uh, 4K. I'm not going to use it 4K because this monitor doesn't support 4K and this is a budget uh, gaming computer, right? But you can do it, of course. Then you, you have all the characteristics over there. Uh, Multi-monitor you have for four displays, but I only need one. And then on the top, you can see the standard configura memory configurations to two gigabytes. Uh, um, the memory interface, GDD GDDR5, you can see all that. So all that, the characteristics for this um, G uh, GeForce model, which again, is going to be in the video description below. I used one, by the way, not a new one. Then what else we can check? So this is my uh, monitor resolution. You can see over there, display resolution. That's the maximum I have. This is not, not even 1080p. So again, this is a budget <laughs> desktop uh, uh, gaming machine. So that's why. And this is the oldest monitor I have. No, actually I have one older than this, but this is this, this one is okay. You're going to see the graphic, the, the graphics, they look just fine, okay? So now we are going to use, of course, uh, I'm going to use my PS3, um, Controller, you can use the keyboard uh, as well, no problems there. We're going to use a Steam, or if you have any other game, a platform, you can use it that as well. So the games we're going to use to test is Hollow Knight, uh, The Witcher 3, great game, by the way, and Resident Evil 2 Remake. So Hollow Knight came out in 2017, if I remember correctly, The Witcher in 2015, and Resident Evil in 2019. So th those are the three games we're going to tested uh, test this um, um, gaming computer because those are the games I have. <laughs> anyway, so um, we are going to start with Hollow Knight. I'm going to record it, Hollow Knight, I'm going to record it from the computer itself, but the other games, we're, I'm, going to, I'm going to use both. So because when you record it from the video card itself, uh, you have a fra um, frames drop. So I don't want that to happen. You're going to see it like clunky and that's not the point, right? So for Hollow Knight, we're going to use only the video card and for the others, myself, right? So this is the game. You can see uh, all the characteristics, uh, all the information in the top left. You can see the average B, uh, frames. You can use the, you can see the CPU and GPU usage as you, so those are great characteristics. Now, this is the game. 
is a platformer, I, a very great. I really recommend it. So the sound is going to be a little off. That's because of my editing software. It's not related to the video card or anything. Because while I was playing it, that doesn't happen. Okay, that didn't happen. So we're going to play it a little. So as you can see, the average um, frame rate or frames per second. I'm sorry, it's around 200. So that's pretty high. So this game is not very video intensive, but this is how it's how it looks. You can play it with no problems. And the CPU is being used a lot. In this game, the GPU is not being used that much, but that's how it looks. So that's when the sound is starting to not be synchronized uh, with the video. But again, that's not because of the video or the video card, it's because of my editing software. <laughs> that's the only reason. So as you can see, the game is playable, 100%. No issues there. Any platformer, you can play it with no problems. There it dropped at 150 uh, frames per second, but that's okay for So that's how Hollow Knight uh, 2D platformer looks like. So now we're going to try the next one. This All right, so this is the second game, uh, my, one of my favorites, which is The Witcher 3. Great game, by the way. So now, I'm, again, I'm using, like in Hollow Knight, I'm recording from the video card itself. Okay, but then we're going to transition to my cell phone. So as you can see here, uh, this is how it looks. I'm going to go to settings or options. Then we go to video and graphics. Everything is uh, at the minimum, low, 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 low. I mean, you can maybe play it in medium, but I'm just testing it as a low budget <laughs> um, you know, gaming computer. So everything is low. The resolution is the same as my monitor. And now we're going to check a little how it looks. Now it's like I mentioned, it's recording for the vehicle, so sometimes that makes the game stop. That doesn't happen when you are not recording with the video card. Okay. So now this is how it looks, and now we are going to transition to my cell phone, so we can actually play. So this is now recording from my cell phone. The game, uh, it's a little, uh, not, not the game, uh, when you, the, the footage that we have recorded with the video card is still saving, so that's why it's kind of frozen over there. And it's going to be that way in a few more seconds because it's saving uh, what we have recorded, all right? After that, it's going to run flawlessly. So this is how it looks, in my opinion, to be the lower settings and to be a game from two, 2015 looks great. Especially if you if you are interested only on the game itself, on on the adventure. So now, as you can see in the top, um, the frames are around 50 per second, which is which is fine. I mean, you can play it with no problems. Now we're going to uh, swim a little and see how it looks. Again, I'm playing with with my PS3 controller. So now here, I believe it's going to freeze for a few seconds because it's finally completed the saving of the file. Now we can start playing the game. So let's see how it goes.
So as you can see, the frames went down to 40. So I believe I'm good now. <laughs> I'm not going to fight with the last one. So I'm just going to, to run. The frames are 47, 45, 48, 50 here. So in combat, it was around 40. So that's good enough to play any 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 game. I mean for a low budget of course. So now let's call Roach. And we're going to see how it performs when we are writing it. I made a mistake here later. So, what do you think? Not bad, huh? That and the frame, uh, frames per second is around 50. So that's how The Witcher 3 looks like on this budget computer. So now we're going to move to the third game. Okay, so the third game is going to be Resident Evil 2. This is going to be the most intensive one because it came out in 2019, okay? So now I'm going to select the saving and this is the long part. So as you can see, the video sped up. It took like 40 seconds to load the file, but it's because of the game, how demanding this game is. So now I'm recording it from my cell phone. As you can see, the frames are the lowest of the three games, 25, around 25 um, frames per second. So now I'm going to start saving. So the game is going to be a little slow for, for that time. So as you can see, I'm showing you how it looks with the lowest resolution. I'm going to show you in a few more seconds. So we move, the frames are not great, 25, 20, around that. And now we are moving around to see how it looks. Now we're going to transition to actually a recording from the video card itself. So this is how it looks. I'm going to show you um, the, the graphics. So everything is uh, in, in the lowest resolution possible and the lowest settings or even off, okay? So but that's how it looks. And the resolution of the screen, of course. I mean the resolution of the game is the same as my is the same as my screen. So now let's uh, go back. As you can see, uh, the CPU is being utilized like 100 percent kind of all the time. So now this is how it looks. And now we're going to transition again to my cell phone, okay? So we can actually play the game. So this is how it looks, moving, moving Leon around. So this is a great, great game, uh, by the way, if you haven't played it yet. It's really, really great. And right now in Steam, uh, they are on the summer sale. I believe it's in $18 or something like that. So now this is how it looks when you're uh, walking around the world, <laughs> the world <laughs> or the map. And now let's actually fight with some things to see how it looks. So the frames are around 24 per second. It's not recording the sound because it was super, super low, but in a few more uh, seconds, we're going to have sound. We're recording from my cell phone, of course. So this, this is how uh, 
how it performs when you are fighting some enemies or something. So here I realized that I had the light on <laughs> inside my room, so I turned it off. And that, that's my hand <laughs> over there. So that way we can see better. So using the um, machine gun, it's taking so long, so... Let's change to something more, like, interesting. So as you can see, around 22, 20 uh, frames per second. And now we're going to fight one more enemy. So let's flame the guy a little. So that's how Resident Evil 2 Remake looks like in using this configuration, this uh, video card and this uh, computer from 2014. So you have seen all the other games. So you can play games like um, Grand Theft Auto V. I'm not sure about Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm not really sure. I mean, you can play it, uh, I believe, like The Witcher, but that game came in 2018, so it might be more demanding. So now, what do we need? to make it run faster a better video card or a better processor so what i'm going to do um, in the future in one two weeks is we're going to replace the uh, processor on this computer and the video card to see if uh, there is an enhancement okay of course that's going to be a little more money but we're going to see how it behaves so that's all i wanted to show you maybe you want to maybe you want to watch one of these videos now thank you very much for watching if you like this video please leave a like and subscribe if you have any other comment or questions leave it in the comment section below and as always i'll see you in the next one